I've not seen such bravery. We've all been there. It's one in the morning and you're up for a late night gaming session. You have to wake up in the morning, but you tell yourself just five more minutes. Next thing you know, it's 11 a.m. You missed your potentially life-changing interview, but that doesn't even matter. You're satisfied and happy that a game was able to captivate you for so long. That experience alone is much more meaningful to you than any amount of money that a job could ever pay. And you crawl back into your bed satisfied with yourself and with your life. Ugh, memories. Maybe it's not always that dramatic, but we've all had those gaming experiences where a game seems to bend the laws of time. You plan on playing maybe 15 or 20 minutes, but you end up spending your entire day playing a single game. I tried to find a word that accurately described this kind of game, but I couldn't really find one. So eventually I settled on time consuming. And when I say time consuming, I don't mean that it necessarily takes a long time to beat, I mean that it literally consumes your time. Time seems to pass more quickly to you and you end up spending more time playing the game in one sitting than you originally intended. So now that we all understand what I mean, I'm ready to give you my personal top five time consuming, asterisk, I couldn't think of a better word, games. We've seen our fair share of Mario Party sequels, from microphones to motion controls to a pff, fucking car. It's pretty clear that Mario Party's golden age has passed. I doubt we'll ever get a Mario Party that rivals two or three, and I'm okay with that. Despite being released over 10 years ago, they remain frequently played games when I have company over. Now there are two types of people that play this game, the kind that whine and complain that it takes too long, or the kind that get really into it. Yeah! A game of Mario Party can take quite a while depending on how many turns you pick. Mix in the inevitable trash talking and gloating, and it becomes quite a lengthy event. And if you turn it into a drinking game, well, say goodbye to your night. The problem with Mario Party is that it's no fun alone. Sure, it can drain your time if you have some friends over, but if you're by yourself, then you're out of luck. Even worse, Mario Party is known to be a quick way to lose friends. You're so the more you play Mario Party, the less friends you have Mario Party to play with. Kind of a shitty situation. Nonetheless, with the amount of hours I've lost to them, Mario Party 2 and 3 have earned their spot at number 5. Everybody knows about Tetris. Literally. Your great-grandmother? She knows. That tribe of people that live with no electricity whatsoever? They know. Your unborn child? He knows. He's gonna grow up to be a dick. There's something about Tetris that is completely addicting. The gameplay is simple, the concept is easy to understand, and the challenge gradually ramps up to keep it from getting boring. After playing for a while, you eventually reach a speed where one mistake will likely result in your downfall. When it finally happens, and it always happens, it's completely devastating. But once you've managed to stop crying and telling yourself that you were so close to beating your high score, it's time to try again. Tetris can be great if you just have time to play a quick game of something, or if you need a break in between doing other things. More often than not, though, I end up spending way more time playing than I intend to. And seeing as how Tetris has been around since 1984, it seems pretty safe to say that it will be a great time waster for years to come. If you're not a fan of the Animal Crossing series, it must really seem like an odd game. You're the only human in a small town of animals, and your goal is to... Well, you don't really have to do anything, and that can be boring for some people. But I find Animal Crossing to be incredibly addicting, and I've spent a lot of time playing it. The things that suck so bad in real life translate into fun in Animal Crossing. Welcome to the exciting world of Animal Crossing. Pay your mortgage. Dig a hole. Buy wallpaper. Do favors for lazy little assholes who won't walk a few yards to take care of their own shit and who pay you with goddamn stationery, you motherfuckers! And along with all the other stuff you can do in Animal Crossing, they made sure to include my favorite pastime, ruining people's day. 
Yeah, that's right, bitch. And as if all the fun of Animal Crossing wasn't enough, they made a version on the DS. Being able to take the game around with me proved to make the experience that much more time-consuming. Then they took us to the city, which was... Eh. And now Animal Crossing is back on a handheld, which is where I think it's best. If only it would come out already. I'm tired of waiting. So... tired. Okay, okay, everybody saw this one coming. Minecraft has grown into what must be one of the most popular time-wasting games in recent years. It's one of those games that you can lose ridiculous amounts of time by playing and not even notice, which would be why it's on this list. Minecraft has no goal. Well, the way I play it, it has no goal. I never really got into any of that enchanting or dragon fighting or whatever else the game has added recently. Some might say all I'm interested in is mining and crafting. <laughs> Minecraft has so many things going for it to keep you engaged for long periods of time. Randomly generating worlds, endless exploration, a ton of mods to change up the visuals and gameplay, and the ability to make completely unique creations. Hell, even collecting stone to build with is exciting. You could run into gold or diamonds, or discover abandoned mineshafts or ravines. There's no such thing as a quick game of Minecraft unless you're playing in hardcore, which is where one death kills you. As for me, I like my Minecraft games to last longer than that. I like playing online and building towns with my friends. I also like secretly killing their dogs when they're offline. I killed your dogs, Matt! I killed your dogs! Roller Coaster Tycoon is one of my all-time favorite games. I remember back when I first got a computer in my room. It was a hand-me-down PC, and my parents wouldn't let me have internet on it. It didn't have the power to do much, but what it could do was run Roller Coaster Tycoon. And oh man, did I love this game. And I still do. It's aged incredibly well. The game came out in 1999, and 14 years later, I still don't have any real complaints with it. I love the graphics, I love the gameplay, I love the music, and I love roller coasters. Roller Coaster Tycoon is a total productivity killer, to the point where I've actually had to uninstall it just to keep myself from playing it too much. The game gives you specific goals to try and accomplish, like having so many people in your park at a certain date. After the goal is over, though, there's nothing stopping you from continuing to make your park badass. Building roller coasters, putting in thrill rides, adding shops and stalls, you can even plant bushes! Fucking bushes, dude! The point is that I've spent a ridiculous amount of time with this game, and it's not one that I can play in short bursts. One minute I'm building my park's first ride, and the next thing I know it's been a few hours. That's why I'm giving it my number one spot of most time-consuming games. Oh, and the sequel was badass too. So there you have my top five time-consuming games. But why settle for just one opinion when you could have two? Here's Peanut Butter Gamer to tell you what he would have put on this list. Hey everybody, I'm Peanut Butter Gamer, but that's not important. What is important is my pick for the top time-consuming video game. That was the title, right? That was the title? My pick for the top time-consuming video game that Brutal Moose is blackmailing me to do for him. Whether it's Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind, or even some of the earlier ones, The Elder Scrolls is the definition of a time-consuming game. Case in point, I started playing Skyrim to get footage for this segment at about 7 p.m., and I eventually forgot that I was supposed to be getting footage and just started playing Skyrim. Next thing I knew, it was 3.30 in the morning and I had to go to bed. There's basically an endless amount of things to do in The Elder Scrolls. There's, of course, the main quest line, but there's countless other quests to do as well. Like stealing stuff? There's a quest line for you! Like talking to demonic demons and doing their every bit? There's a quest line for you. Let's just be real here. Do you like killing people? There's even a quest line for you, my friend. It's called the Dark Frickin' Brotherhood. But even the actual quest lines aside, there's tons of stuff to do in these games. Just run around for a while. Something will probably happen. Why not try your luck at hunting? Here we go! Unnecessarily long slow mo. Bam! Right in the butt cheek. Or you could just prance into people's encampments and kill them. Chances are, they hate you anyway. Everyone seems to want to kill you in these games. All right, just gotta line my aim up perfectly here. You know, accuracy is everything after all. Okay, and there we go. And if you're tired of all the adventure, violence, and watching things like this happen, 
which I have no idea why you would be, you can just read. Yes, there are even books in this game, tons of them. I'm collecting an entire pile of books personally. And I really do plan on finishing those one of these days. I've just been a little bit busy doing some completely legal things lately. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, that was great, PVG. I was just, uh... Busy. I'd also love to hear what your top five time-consuming games are, so leave me a comment and let me know. But only five. I don't want none of this top six bullshit.